Welcome back to the program. Time to get interactive now. Our phone lines are open if you want to join in and have your say on the conversation regarding the NIN BVN bank account linkages. I know it's a bit, it's a bit tongue in cheek, like too much, but uh, the government is asking Nigerians to do the needful or else the accounts will be deactivated and they will be no longer uh, able to conduct businesses with those uh, accounts, especially tier one accounts that are supposed to address the issue of financial inclusion where a lot of people were easily um, given the chance to open their accounts using just their phone numbers and their home addresses. But now the CBN is saying we have to sanitize the system and 91 million bank accounts uh, will be affected by this particular decision. You've heard from the expert about why this move is is possibly going to be in the best interest of um, Nigeria, but also there are structural issues. People joining the queues at banks, waiting for hours on end just so they can get uh, their link, their bank accounts linked to their BVNs and NINs. Have you done yours? Share your experience with us. The number will be showing on your TV screen in just a moment so you can be a part of the conversation. Let's start with the studio. Have you, are, are you sure your account numbers are all linked it, it's going to be a bad example <laughs> you know if i should put it out there <laughs> but uh, right. let's let's just say i've been a bit busy but i'm sure i would catch up wow so yeah. yeah i hope it's not your business account because they're going to shut it down <laughs> until you do the needful no mm, okay. but, but i keep pushing for you know making it easier for nigerians like why yeah. must someone be present you know there are things that can be linked easily um just uh, perhaps yeah, using the website it's supposed or to something. be it's supposed to be seamless it's supposed to be easy i mean with your phone you can you can do all of these mm. things um but unfortunately the experiences of most nigerians over the past few weeks since this issue has come up especially with regards to the deadline has been an unpleasant one people having to forgo the whole working day just to stay at the bank to get their bvn and nin uh, sorted out we have uh, someone on the line hello good morning and welcome to the program. Your name, please, and where you're calling from. Hello. Please good turn down the volume of your yeah, TV. Please set. turn down the volume of your TV Hello, set. Good morning. good morning. Your name, please, and yeah, where you're calling morning. from. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Please turn down the volume of your TV set. Yeah, I have done that. My name is You the Best. You. Yield the best. My name is Yield the best. Calling you from Cross River, Calabar. Okay, good to hear from you this morning. How is uh, Cross River this morning? Yeah, my location is very calm and quiet. There's no problem in my location. Good, good to hear that. Go ahead, please. What uh, is your take on this BVN yeah, NIN con I, connection? I, yes, I just want to react on that uh, NIN uh, link to the bank. Hmm. What? When is the actual deadline? When is the actual deadline for the linking of the NIN? And uh, how can someone know that you have your number has been linked to the bank? Your NIN has been linked to the bank. Mm. Okay, uh, good questions there. Uh, first of all, if you have an application of your bank, um, the bank that you use, for instance, you're going to see an indication whether you have a tier one account or a tier three account or a tier two account. So it indicates it there. But also, you would have to go to your bank if you have not at any point in time given them your NIN or your BVN uh, to be connected uh, to, to your bank. As to whether you are deactivated or not, I think uh, the question uh, remains on whether you are still able to transact uh, business on that uh, account. So I would suggest that um, you, you go to your bank or perhaps give them a call. Uh, to find out more information uh, about that. But thank you so much, Yudi, for joining the conversation. We have another caller on the line. Hello, good morning. Are you with us? Uh, yes, I'm with you. Okay, good your morning. name and location, please. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Babagana Ibrahim, calling from Maiduguri, Borno State. It's good to have you, Baba Gana. Go ahead with your thoughts. Yeah, thank you. I think my take about this, uh, in the national perspective, it will be very helpful to the nation, in particular in the issue of insecurity and uh, corruption. Maybe this is one of the major reasons why they started to do this, to tackle such issues. But uh, for the general public, I think the government should think of and 
easier way to, to you know, use this thing. Because uh, if you can look back, the issue of MTN and all these networks, they use this USD code to register their name and all this. So if the companies are doing this, why can't the government to use such things to do? Because if you look at, in general perspective, not all the citizens are using Android phones. Mm. Some of, most of the people in the villages and all these areas, they use these small, small phones to do their transactions. Yeah. So I think it's better, it would be better if the government mm. decide to use this USB cut. Yeah. I think I, it will the general public. I quite agree with you, Babagan, on that. So that it, people don't have to leave their various locations to come to the yeah. bank and, and sort this yeah. out. Like your, people in our area where we have uh, transportation issues, people, mm. people from some local governments to the metropolis. And if you look at most of our local governments here in Borno State, they don't have banking facilities due to the long-term right. insecurity that we face. So yeah. for some people, even those that are working in local government to get their salary, they, they have challenges to come to the metropolis to access their salary. No place of going to bank, you know, to just do this need and be there. Mm. Yeah. In our place, they used to gather for the whole local government. They will, they will assign one person, they give their ATM, so that you access their salary, their monthly salary. So now if you look at such issues, I think the government is, is better for the populace to use this USD because anywhere you are, if you have your small phone, you can use it to link all these things. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, mm -hmm. Baba. I couldn't agree with you more on some of those points about making it seamless, making it easy for people to access. But just to answer you this question, uh, the, the deadline is supposed to be March 1st, 2024 all funded tier one accounts or wallets without bvn or nin will be placed on post no debit or credit so you will not receive and you will not send funds out of those accounts rendering them incapable of conducting debit uh transactions so uh that is the deadline as far as uh, the information concerned. Uh, is concerned and considering what nigerians are already calling for is the mm. fact that you know it's not enough time yeah. given yeah, for people I to think, link this I think they've been, warned, they've been signing this warning for, for quite some time now. I think two years ago, there was the extension and further extension of the deadline and so on and so forth. But I think like Nigerians that we are, we, we, we don't take it seriously until we actually see that the government actually wants to walk the talk uh, on some of these things. But also, the issues around accessibility has mm. to be factored Indeed. in some way. There are a lot of people at rural areas who cannot afford to come to the True. metropolis for this. All right, we have another caller. Good morning. Hello, morning. Yes, your name and location, please. I am Kusate was a calling from Abuja. Okay, thank you for joining us. So what is your take on the yeah. BVN and NIN link? Well, I, I will first of all disagree with Baba, Baba Dana from okay. Manu, on okay. the issue of insecurity. The main reason why we were meant to register our SIM card was because of insecurity. But since then, insecurity has escalated beyond the expectation of the citizens. And some of these people who constitute as bandwagon or bandits are well known, they communicate freely using their own phone line without being tracked down by the security. On the issue of corruption, too, I disagree with Baba Ghana on the basis that why we were to link our, why we were to have BVM was because if you are to have 10 accounts in different banks, you'll be tracked and the amount of money that enters in such account will be monitored. But since then, corruption has escalated beyond the expectation of Nigerian citizens. Let us take a look at the past administration, how much people have been accused of being in bed, or were they not putting that money in their bank accounts? Or were they not transacting or shifting that money from an account number to even even to their houses? So, so if it's not things, security, what do you think it is? The reason? It is, if, you, if, you, if it is meant for the insecurity, it, is it being enforced? Mm. Enforcement is the most important. If you are making a law that you are not going to enforce it, why are you making it? 
Right. 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 Laws, we refuse to enforce it. We com we, 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 we compound suffering. Of, of, we, we, we make the citizens to suffer. To look at how people are queuing up. Right. Mr. Peter, at the end, we don't enforce it. Yeah. Mr. Peter, there's a question of accessibility. Uh, part of the whole idea of tier one accounts was for CBN when a lot of people didn't have bank accounts. They were trying to make it easy for people to have bank accounts. Are we saying that the, the, okay. the, 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 the criminals that are, are, are operating so, and communicating, uh, right. they are not being accessible to security operatives? So, so the question... the Only question will, our security operatives don't have the gadget to track them, Okay, I, I think we're, we're, we're talking about two different things here because we're talking about this in connection with the bank accounts that will be deactivated. He's saying that we should make it simpler by using USSD, which is people can just use their phones to connect no, their I bank accounts. I agree with the suggestion. Yeah. I agree with the suggestion of using USB. Mm. I agree with that, but I'm only opposing the idea of it curtail uh, this in um, crime, it will curtail uh, this in um, right. embezzlement of public funds. Okay. Okay. That one okay. Is actually. okay. Mm. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you so much, Peter, for joining the conversation. Really appreciate it. And you, 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 can, you, you can you can understand the polarization in, that indeed. people have. Uh, you know, various opinions about the yeah, best. Yeah, for, for uh, him, course of he action. feels it is not really about security. I mean, uh, in his own, uh, you know, thoughts, it's all about uh, if Nigeria wanted to get rid of, you know, yeah. the security issue, they would have, or the, yeah, the federal exactly. government. That was what he was yeah. pushing on. Uh, it's about BVN, it's about NIN linkage to bank accounts, especially tier one accounts that are not connected to it, and the CBN's directive to deactivate them. So 91 million accounts will be affected accounts yeah. and wallets alike uh, that have not been connected with bvn which is the bank verification number and also the national identification uh, number mm -hmm. hello good morning and welcome to the program your name please and where you're calling from yeah uh, this is uh said you from ninja state come again this is Fabian you from Niger State. Big Fabian from Niger State. Thank you so much for joining the conversation, Fabian. Go ahead, please. Where do you stand on this? Yeah, um, my question is about this uh, BVN NIN uh, bank uh, leakage. Go ahead. I'm not uh, well clear about the, the thing. Is it that uh, there is a new uh, innovation in terms of linking NIN with uh, BVN? Uh, or okay. if you already have your yeah. NIN in your bank account, that is already done? Yeah, so, so this is the point. CBN last year issued a circular saying this is now a mandatory requirement for all tier one account uh, and wallets to be linked with the BVN and NIN. And if you don't do so by March 1st, which was last week, uh, it will be deactivated. So you, you, you have a post note debit or credit on the account you'll not be able to transfer money out of the account and you may not also likely receive money inside the account until you connect your nin and your bvn to that bank account that is the gist of the whole conversation hmm. and most so people what already those, what about those that have already uh, opened their account with this nin or they have already changed some of their details in uh, account using this nin hmm. would they go to the bank and do this nin leakage again uh, no. I, I don't think if your account is already connected to the, your BVN or your NIN, you have to worry about anything, mm. uh, except if, of course, you're unable to do something uh, with, with your bank account, uh, if it's a, still a tier one uh, bank account. But, of course, you need okay. to go to your bank just to confirm if everything is uh, well sorted. Indeed. Okay, so that is a very good idea. Yeah. Uh, but I want to suggest to the CBN and also... Uh, to the uh, NIMC organization. Go ahead. That is, they should make it suitable, easy for the people to do this linkage without coming to the bank. Mm. People should find it uh, easy by using their US USSD yeah. uh, code to link this uh, bank vision, N9, and uh, uh, all the requirements, or smartphone. Mm. Because if you, find, if you make it uh, complex for people to go to the bank, when people are already thinking about hungry, hunger mm. and other things, this guy is a very huge uh, uh, thing for the people to suffer this thing again. Mm. Well, I, I can't so agree with you I more. Want, I suggest that the bank to make it easy without mm. uh, going to the bank. People queuing in a long queue, whereby uh, there is this problem of hunger in the in the in the country. Yeah. So they should just find a suitable code for linking this uh, NIN because mm. I also have some people here that 
they are even tired of it. Mm. They say that the bank can go ahead and block their account because they cannot afford to go and queue in the bank while they have things to to do. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, I, 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 I think I think with regards to the USSD uh, whole idea or the applications, uh, I think most of these banks offer these services, for instance, uh, whether you're trying to request your BVN or whether it's on the application, there are places where under your profile you can link and put in your BVN or your NIN. I think some of these um, uh, avenues are there on the they platform. They are. I mean, I know like some so banks. It's about creating the awareness in case people don't know. Don't know this about is how to it. go actually yes. about um, so your it's up to it's up to the banks now. This is not the yeah. federal government. It's because they're, they're, they're the biggest losers on, the, on this one. If they deactivate 91 million accounts mm. and say, for instance, you are a bank that has two million tier one accounts and they're deactivated, mm. that's a big loss for you. Of course. So it, it makes sense that the banks will be proactive to educate They did send emails and messages and emails? there was, yes. And, and, no. <laughs> okay. okay, now okay. he okay. went Okay. But, but then a lot of uh, kind yeah. of things, of course. Uh, I, I, there are some banks that did send it mm. and even people that, you know, are learned, people that have access to the emails and the message, mm -hmm. when they go through the website, it is quite difficult to navigate. So mm -hmm. it's not really easy and you need to make it yeah. easy for people. Okay. People cannot travel far and wide just mm -hmm. to come and get exactly. this done. So uh, some of the uh, recommendations on this particular business article as we wrap things up is visit your designated bank website or navigate at self-service uh, portal, select BVN, NIN link, input your account details and the system will generate an OTP which is a one-time password code sent to your linked phone number to the bank account after receiving the OTP enter it and of course uh, verify that OTP and you can generate uh, a capture and type in the code which is just supposed to be you know uh, a password that will show on the screen and of course uh, it will present you with your bank uh, details and then you can generate a uh, virtual NIN uh, if, if that's what you want yeah. to generate. And there is a uh, code to, for that. To, yeah, yeah, to just bypass the whole uh, NIMSI uh, NIN. Uh, this is so. Just so to uh, warn you, though, you know, still that comes with a bit of complications. I don't know yeah. if it's the network, you know, from the network providers or what? if it's from the bank due to congestion at the same time. So mm. something is definitely happening. Mm. Okay, uh, that's it for uh, the interactive session. Thank you so much for uh, your contributions. Uh, we'll be back uh, tomorrow morning with another opportunity for you to comment mm. on a different talking point. For now, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk, talk to you about the EEL, the Expatriate Employment Levy introduced or launched by the Tinubu Administration just this past week. And why are employers not particularly happy about this new initiative. More on that after the break. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us on Daybreak. Now, on 27th of February 2024, the federal government of Nigeria introduced the Expatriate Employment Levy, the EEL, a mandatory financial contribution imposed on employers to hire expatriate workers in Nigeria. The levy is fixed at 15,000 US dollars for directors and ten thousand uh, dollars for other categories of the expatriates it is payable annually that's like and some of the objectives of course of the expatriates um, employment levy are to promote skill transfer and knowledge sharing balance economic growth and social welfare enhance collaboration between the public and the private sectors and address demographic shifts the expatriate employment levy, which is to be administered by the Nigerian Immigration Service, will be implemented from 5th, uh, 15th of March 2024. The federal government's 70% additional levy on expatriate employment has attracted outcry from some Nigerians or some quarters, let's say. But to discuss more on this expatriate employment levy on daybreak this morning, we have the Director General of Nigeria Employers uh, Consultative Association, the NECA, Mr. Adewale Smart Oyerin Day. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. 
having us. Yeah, it's good to have you. So he's joining us live of, uh, from Geneva, Switzerland. So, uh, uh, Mr. Adewale, let's talk about, uh, you know, this EEL, that uh, it's a new policy. Uh, why are you people pushing back? Why is the NECA pushing back, you know, this policy so hard? Thank you. Thank you once again. Um, for those that will, those that do, I just to set a, a context to the conversation. The NECA is a responsible, forward-looking organization, and we are, if you, if you allow me, probably at, at the forefront of, of national development, of skill development, of um, enterprise sustainability, and global integration, basically. So. Our role in contributing to national development in all contexts is um, is basically unquestionable. So, while government have the prerogative to come up with policies and programs to meet certain objectives, it's also important to say that those policies and programs normally we have consequences on different stakeholders, and the expectation is that. Yeah, those stakeholders will, have been, uh, will be brought into on board, basically, why those policies have been formulated, why it's been implemented, and also why it's been, it's been monitored, so that the effectiveness of it can be tracked at every point in time. A, a, a presidential candidate or a president once said that you cannot shave a man's head behind, behind his back. So if it's, if it's going to affect me, the court see demands that you, you let me know. Now, coming back to the EEL, you know, our, our concern, you know, our concern is born out of three or four basic issues, and which are nationalistic in in perspective. They are not, like I repeat, they are not driven by profit. They are not driven by the need to just um, to just cry the, or, 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 or cry the wolf. They are driven by real issues that not only affect employers, but is also at the core of our national development. And the first one that I mentioned basically for you, for us, is the issue of the, the, the legality, the law behind it. Uh, we believe strongly that the Constitution sets the stage for any kind of activity that we want to do, both as an individual, both as institutions, private institutions, and government institutions. And the Constitution explicitly states that for any levies, taxes, or fees, it has to be legislated upon. It must be through the acts of the National Assembly. Mm. And the aim is basically so that no agency, no government, either from state, local, or federal government, can arbitrarily come up with levies or fees or charges. In, in all the context of the handbook and the EEL, we didn't see any legislative backing or any law quoted to say this is the basis for it. Which, um, which is a concern for us, because if we are all committed to building institutions, then we should all be concerned about what is happening in that, in that aspect. Then the second part of it is the issue of ease of doing business. You know, in the last one week, about two or three different big brands, big organizations in this country, employing thousands and thousands of Nigerians, have declared losses. Those that couldn't take, take the eat in the last one year, we've lost over 15 or 18 different organizations to different issues. And as those organizations are leaving, all the businesses in the value chain, just take one business for instance, take a, a GSK for instance. When GSK announced they are leaving, for most of us, or for most, most of the uninformed populace, they feel it's only GSK that will be affected. Now, all the businesses supplying GSK products, supplying them inputs, they will also be affected by GSK's living. Their employees will be affected. Their, the household will be affected. So for us, it goes to the core of ease of doing business. Why are we going to charge an average business, a business that has taken the pain to look for expertise? Why will we charge the employee, employer another 15,000, another 10,000? We feel it's at the heart of issue of, of ease of doing business. It's burdensome and it's, it's not necessary at this point in time. The, the contradictions also 
you know, one of, one of the core, core feature of the last administration is contradictions, where the fiscal and monetary policies, they keep contradicting each other, creating problems, not only for local businesses, even for foreign investors. Because when investors cannot predict what's going to happen, when policies somersault has become the order of the day, then it becomes very difficult for you to plan even as a local business. Yeah. And we feel strongly that the contradictions in those policies is quite, is quite huge. That needs a, right. a review. Look yeah. at the Presidential Fiscal Monetary Fiscal and Tax Reforms Committee. They were created, headed by Taiwo Yudini, they were created to review all the levies, fees, and taxes that is paid across the three, the three tiers of government. Now come with recommendations on how to streamline that. The committee is I've just submitted their report to the president a few weeks ago. And now another levy, out of the context of what the committee has done, came up. And we say, look, it's, it's contradictory. It's, 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 it can also negate the, 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 the plan of this government to, uh, to, 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 to successfully marshal these reforms. Right. Because if there are contradictions at this early stage, then what happens in one, two, three years' time? Yeah. And uh, lastly, for us, is you cannot permit me, please. You cannot, you cannot spend millions and millions. The president just came from Qatar to seek for investors. You cannot call investors. You cannot go out seek for investors. We, as NECA also, the engineering employers, cannot go out, promote this country, get investors to come. Now, on their way here, we are now creating other bottlenecks. Because look, I can't bring one billion dollars to this economy. And now you are now giving me conditions on who I should bring to come and manage the one billion dollars that I'm bringing. It's, 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 it's not done anywhere. And countries where these are done, there are basic parameters that they put in place. Hmm. Those are our basic concerns, and we have expressed it to the appropriate contact, and we believe action is being taken, hmm. even as we speak, to address those concerns. Yeah, Mr. Smart, you, you talk about how this is not uh, done anywhere else, but I would beg to differ that in other climes, whether it's in Europe or in Asia, you have to have certain conditions on your work permit. I said, it, I, I, I said, I yeah. said, where it's been done, right. there are frameworks. Right. Frameworks that are put in place. This is done in Singapore. This is done in, in UK. There is a, a semblance of it in UK. But we cannot just pick all those things. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot import them who clan can sink up. Even at the ILO, you know, I'm at the ILO governing body meeting that, that, that started yesterday. Even at the ILO, all their recommendations came comes with a caveat that for countries you can apply this or you can vary it based on your level of development. Right. For the UK, UK has not come to Nigeria to come and look for investment. They are not looking for investment. Those places, they are, they are, they are the, 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 they call them the the seller's market. They own it. You are the one going there. They don't really need you to come. Yeah. So they can put conditions and preconditions to your coming. I, but we need them. Yeah. We need those investments yeah. for national development and for, the, for growth. So you cannot ask them to come and then create bottlenecks for their coming. Uh, and I, I think while they are the seller's market, we are the resource market where the resources are here in Nigeria. Uh, the minerals are here. The opportunities are also here. And Nigeria is also a market uh, for some of their products. But, you know, going down to the details of this, the uh, immigration service, which is the lead industry uh, uh, government agency as far as implementing this is concerned, talks about, you know, companies... Uh, need to needing to register their expatriates working with them from now onwards however uh, the effective date of the implementation is set at um, 15th of March and of course uh, the last day of compliance for the EEL is uh, Monday 15th of April this year and it says the EEL card is now mandatory a mandatory document like a passport and will be required at the time of lawful exit and entry into this country it sounds to me like we're trying to take charge we're trying to take control of a system that has uh, gone haywire for quite some time now and this looks like order to me what is the positive if there's any positive from this eel launch in your view despite your criticism of some of uh, its provisions the immigration act the immigration acts i can't remember the section but explicitly states the conditions 
and the preconditions for an expatriate to enter this country. They also state explicitly what must be done before a company can employ an expatriate. Let me paraphrase it. He said, for every position that the company want to employ an expatriate, the company must advertise that position and until it is, if the company is satisfied, until the Comptroller General is satisfied that no Nigerian applied or no Nigerian is qualified to, to take that position, before such positions will be given to the expatriates. The local content act, local content law, that is ap applicable significantly to the oil and gas sector, also states explicitly the conditions precedent for a company to bring in an expatriate. And even in, in the oil and gas, it's quite stringent because monitoring is done almost every three months, reviews are done. Then why don't we? Why don't we strengthen those current frameworks? What is the guarantee that the new framework will not suffer the same fate that the two that I mentioned will suffer? Let's strengthen those frameworks, is our recommendation, and then create structures for monitoring. Look, I will not sit here and, and grandstand that there are no new abuses. There are no abuses for some unscrupulous employers. But if the regulatory framework is strong enough, and we all we all commit to implementing it, all those excesses can be curbed. We believe the uh, uh, expatriate expatriate em employment levy is a duplication of the of the of the Immigration Act. It's a duplication of also the local content plan. and it creates further bodies because with with the immigration act those companies are already paying about between one thousand and two thousand dollars to collect separate cards for for those for those for those expatriates so there is a regulation that is being charged to almost two thousand dollars for separate card another five hundred dollars for for administrative administrative fees and we are bringing another twelve thousand dollars how many companies? You know, how many companies can actually afford afford the context of this um, of, of this fee? So our view for, for, for a year, Mr. Smart, it doesn't it look like a good it is, deal. It is, it is it, and we won't address those issues. For a year, if they have to pay that fifteen thousand, it looks like a good deal to me, depending on the productivity of the expatriate. Fifteen thousand dollars per annum. Yeah. So if if you have fifteen expatriates. Calculate. Let's, let's 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 do an hypothetical. Let's say we have ten expatriates. You pay one point two, one point five. You pay one hundred and fifty thousand dollars mm. per annum for ten expatriates. If you run a business, if you really run a business, mm. then we all we all appreciate the value. You know, what one hundred and fifty thousand dollars? can do to a business or the damage that one hundred and fifty thousand dollars can do to a business. I mean few days ago if, few if, days ago yeah. the, I, I mean, say this few days ago two or three companies I will not mention their name because of um so that so that you won't send invoice to us for that two or three big businesses they declared massive losses. You know why? Because of forex. Because when they convert, when they, their, their profits, their operating expenses was converted to, to dollars, because of the high rate of getting dollars, they, they ran into massive losses in billions. Now, a business that ran into hundred billion dollars, hundred billion naira a loss, or, or let's let's say ten billion dollars loss. Right. Who do you think will be the first casualty? Which business will lose ten billion dollars in this environment that will not retrench? And the more you retrench, you are creating more dysfunctional issues for yourself. Because unemployment will increase, um, security issues will increase. So rather than deal with the current issue, deal with one issue of enterprise sustainability. Right. And you have dealt with the issue of insecurity, you'll have dealt with the issue of revenue for government because the employees will pay tax and the businesses that are sustainable will continue to pay tax. The, the government the government says with its tax reforms and some of the economic reforms it is creating an enabling environment for investors to feel at home and for also uh, investors to feel that they can be able to you know meet their profit margins and so on and so forth but also the government says as far as this eel is concerned its primary goals include fostering the development of the local workforce diminishing 
a reliance on foreign skills and encouraging companies to prioritize Nigerian citizens in their hiring practices. So if you cannot afford $150,000, guess who you. you're going to employ? Thank, thank you're you going to employ that. Nigerians. For, so it's you. a win-win situation either way. <laughs> either you pay thank or you, you hire locally. Thank, thank you for reading that. Thank you for coming out with that, with that, with that quote. And, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll take you back to the recent trends. In the last three years, in the last three years, the core of Nigerian experts They've left this country. They've moved to Canada. They've moved to US. They've moved to Europe, even Asia, to go and get jobs. They didn't leave because expatriates were taking their job. They didn't leave because there were no job. They were leaving because of the macroeconomic issues that has become unbearable for them, and they left. I repeat, the core of Nigerian experts, from the banking industry to the aviation industry, manufacturing they've all left most of them have left this country because of the macroeconomic issue so there is no no bringing in the issue of creating jobs for nigerians it doesn't arise i, I give you a, I, I, I a beg very to differ on that scenario. one i mean when we look at you know other developed countries talking about china even the usa uk they always put their own citizens first so now that you're saying uh, uh, the, the president's, uh, you know, intention on making sure that Nigerian citizens get at least a sizable amount of job opportunities, what would you say is the safest balance, you know, for the president? Because one of your reasons also is saying it will affect the foreign direct investment. So how can the government balance, you know, uh, ensuring that the, uh, it won't affect uh, the foreign direct investment and at the same time, give Nigerians an equal opportunity to get jobs? We can balance, we can create this balance without imposing additional financial burden on those businesses. That's our concern. We have a structure that works and we cannot continue to burden those that are legally running their business. We have the SEPA card, we have the Immigration Act, we have the, we have the Local Content Act. If those structures, those frameworks are not working, why not let's strengthen those structures? Let's strengthen those institutions so that they, they, are, they will be in a position to carry out their functions as stipulated in the law. The Immigration Act stipulates explicitly how they should carry out those functions. So why are we not doing that? It also creates structures for monitoring. It also creates structures for evaluating how well those structures, those, those, um, those, those policies have been implemented. Why not create, strengthen those structures to be able to perform their function? Why do we have to create another structure that seeks to burden? You know, we, we, we just must accept that this $12,000 or $15,000 is an additional burden on any business. And that's our concern, that this is driven All right, Mr. by Smart. The, the, the desire to raise money, but not to control. And that is at the the core of our concern. Uh, the Mr. Balance Smart, that let's, you are get, about let's get this cleared up. Created. Is the NECA pushing for, you know, uh, the termination of this policy entirely, or are there modifications that you so you want it to be at least put in place? Because earlier you made mention that you made your complaint and then framework uh, are already in place, but they have been considered. So what are those particular framework? Or is NECA just pushing for the entirety, the cancellation of this policy? Well, first, I must say we have, we have made appropriate representation to, to the appropriate, um, appropriate quarters. And those, those concerns are currently receiving, receiving, um, receiving due consideration from the IS quarter to, to first of all, our, our, our request is, is the suspension of this, of this policy first. Not only because of the issues that we have as employers, but also because of the economic consequences, not only for employers or for the average Nigerians, even for government. If it is not important, then the president will not from day one go out to Europe, to America, asking for investors to come to this country. If it's not important, if foreign direct investment is not important, then he will not, he will not have embarked on those many trips. And we should also not, 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 not believe that Nigeria is the only country that is the orb of investment. For you to know, we have in, in good authority 
businesses, companies that are leaving this country and setting up businesses around our neighbors. We have businesses moving to Togo, to Bene. Because of the instrumentality of African free, Africa Canada free trade, they can produce anywhere in Africa and bring those goods here to sell. Those are our issues. So our recommendation is this. Let's sit down and strengthen collaboratively strengthen those frameworks the immigration act why is it not working if it's not working yeah. if government feels the local content act is not working why is it not working let's create structures that strengthens those institutions so that they'll be able to control control as they should have the they should control right are we saying are we saying are we saying permit me are we saying that if all companies decides to pay the fifteen thousand dollars and they decide to replace all their nigerian workers with expatriates will that be okay with us if fifteen dollars fifteen thousand dollars is the is the is the the control they are putting in place if all companies in nigeria decide to now bring in expatriates then let's pay the fifteen thousand dollars to immigration you collect the fifteen thousand dollars and we populate all functions with expatriates without without solve the problem we are trying to solve the key issue is this, and, and we must run away from it. This policy creates contradictions even for government. It creates bottleneck for the work of the presidential committee. It we also have the potential to put pressure on the dollars. Imagine all companies here looking for um, trying to mop up dollars so that they can pay for they can pay for pay for the pay for the levy. Are we not putting more pressure on the naira? Okay. So our view is an holistic review of this policy, a suspension first. Hmm and the holistic review of this policy, then a collaborative approach for us to look at why the current legislation of frameworks, why are they not working? And then we come up with what we work, with our association, NECA, playing a very prominent role in the context of monitoring. Okay. So um, uh, Mr. Smart, we are let's... a responsible organization, and, and, and those, are, those are the things that we have promoted over time. Responsible yeah. enterprises is one of our core, our, our, our core mantra. Okay. Uh, in talking, since we're talking hypotheticals now, uh, one of the issues raised by the government is about finding equilibrium, right? And they also talk about skills transfer. So you can employ two expatriates, for instance, in a particular field or in a particular category. And in your terms of, you know, uh, employment conditions, you can talk about skills training so that they can transfer the knowledge that these Nigerian employees don't have. And after a year or two, you might not necessarily need those extra, uh, expatriates because why? They have already transferred the knowledge and those Nigerian workers who you don't have to pay the $15,000 for because of their employment can now take over and run uh, your company and, and even better, uh, you know, uh, at, at, to even save you cost. However, though, when you talk about businesses moving from here and there, the United States is arguably the biggest and largest economy in the world. We have businesses moving out of the United States, going to Canada, going to China, going to India. Businesses will always move to places where they can pay less tax and probably maximize the opportunity. So it's not necessarily just a Nigerian thing. And we have Nigerians working here. We have Americans working in Nigeria. We have Indians working in Nigeria. We have China, Chinese people working in Nigeria. And we have different nationals working in Nigeria. Wherever the opportunity goes, that's where the people would, uh, you know, seek employment opportunities at. So it's safe to say that as much as Nigerian professionals are leaving the country in search of greener pastures, we also have people coming into the country to look for some of these job opportunities. Uh, obviously, the government is not trying to, you know, backtrack on this one. What is a workable compromise in your view? Because they're saying it's mandatory. And if you don't do it, the you fine know, is 3.5. The, the 3.5 million you know, it, it, is going is. to be the punishment for, for violators of this one. Um, what is, you, you talked about how you've taken your concern to the appropriate authorities. You're running out of time. We're in March now. By next week, uh, the implementation will kick in. And I suppose employers would have to find a way to scramble to, to comply with this uh, particular uh, uh, new policy. So give me a sense of what your expectations are as far as a compromise is, because I don't think scrapping this is even on the table for the government. You know, it's, 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 um, it's always interesting when we, when, we, when, we, when we make analogies and we say this is happening in America, 
this is happening in, in Europe and this is happening in, 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 in Asia, in China. You know, certain things that those countries can take for granted because of the level of our development, because of the level, the current state that we find ourselves, we cannot, we cannot afford, cannot afford those incidences. It will be, it will be an, an anomaly, you know, for us to accept that, yeah, businesses are leaving other climates, then they should leave our country. Uh, the last, um, the last Bureau of Statistics um, uh, unemployment rate was over was about five points, which if, if you use the last parameter that we use, the last parameter before they change to the current parameter, the unemployment rate should be, should be eating about 40%. So, why are, we, why are we helping to say it is okay for them to leave? Or why are we helping to say we don't need foreign direct investment, if those people can, they can, they can go to places, it doesn't matter. I think it matters and matters a lot. Now, on the issue of compromise, you know, as I've said, we have, we have, we have reached out to the appropriate quarters. We have, um, and there are ongoing conversation um, on, on ways to arrive at, um, at that balance that we all, um, we all seek. I mentioned earlier that we will not, we will not say there are no abuses. We accept there are abuses here and there, but those abuses can be dealt with without, um, without, without this, this punitive, this punitive, um, this punitive, positive policy of EEL. But definitely, this government is a listening government. Uh, they've demonstrated over time that they listen. And from the conversations we've had at the back end, we know the government is listening. So in the next few days, I think a lot of things are going to change um, that will focus on moving this country forward. I think the, the core for all of us is, is, is national development um, and, and growth for all of us to but benefit from this case, prosperity that they have shown Mr. Mr. Smart, just in case, you know, the outcome could favor, uh, uh, it could go towards what NECA wants, or it could come towards, you know, uh, in terms of Nigerians' uh, uh, belief, favoring Nigerians. So what if it goes that way, you know, and uh, the government continue with this decision? What would your advice be to business owners? I, I, I will restate my, my earlier comment that we believe strongly, very strongly. Okay. Uh, the government is a listening government. Mm. That conversation is ongoing, and um, in 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 few days' time, you know, uh, we all we all come back to to um, we all come back to um, to the reality of the, the need that enterprise sustainability is one of the key, if one of if not the most important element in in, in, right. in, in our national development. I said well, that conversation is going on, and we trust that. That, that the needful will be done. Okay. The government is listening and we believe strongly they will do the needful. Okay. Uh, it's safe to say that from the body language of the government, it's a no retreat, no surrender kind of body language. But <laughs> we'll it remains to, to be seen see. what happens in the days to come. Mm. Mr. Smart uh, Adewale Oyende is the direct is the is the director general nigeria employers consultative association NECA join us from geneva switzerland this morning uh to analyze the uh, expatriate employment levy that was launched by the chinubu administration late uh, february this year well thank you so much uh, mr smart for joining the conversation really appreciate you for taking the time and of course we hope to speak to you soon just before i leave just just, just before i leave um I don't know how many expatriates you have in Trust TV. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, I think, interestingly, none. That is good. Yeah. That is good. <laughs> but um, finally, for me, if you permit me one minute, you know, and I need to share this for you to understand, you know, one of our local airlines, you know, the MD called and said, in the last three years, they spent $6 million to train six Nigerian pilots. And they came back after working for about a year. Almost six of them, they've almost left. Some have left for the US, some have left for Dubai, some have left for, for different countries to look for jobs, seeking for jobs. Right. Now, I paid $6 million to train six Nigerians. And because of the mobility of labor, you can't really bond me. The, the six of them decide to leave because of the macroeconomy issue to seek for jobs everywhere. Mm. Where does that leave me as, as a business? Six million dollars to train six Nigerians. 
and because of they needed they wanted greener pastures they need then will okay. you now punish me for bringing an expatriate that probably will give me some level of stability or give me some level of or, or enhance the capacity of my planes to fly and right. airplanes are not you know you, you don't you don't get um, rookies to fly airplanes right. so how do we deal with that how do we balance that what do i tell the the owner of that business that i've committed that kind of fun to train the same we nigerians our brothers and sisters and right. you can also also you cannot also blame the nigerians that have decided to seek okay. greener pastures somewhere else right so how do we deal with that that is the poster that i will, I will leave with you and okay. probably live with, live with our viewers okay thank you so much mr smart uh here in there for uh, you know the analysis really appreciate your thoughtful uh insight on this one and we hope to speak thank to you soon thank you so much thank for you. your time this morning all right thank you for having us thank you Right. OK, uh, we're going to take a quick break when we return. You know what's coming up next and look at the front pages of uh, some select national dailies this morning to bring you up to speed with the stories making the headlines. Newspaper review is coming up next. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Right now, we'll take a look at the front pages of the National Dailies. As usual, we'll start with the Daily Trust newspaper here. Now, the major story on the Daily Trust newspaper today is saying Kadoso wants Nigeria on debt risk. The uh, riders are saying federal government and states owe about 139 trillion naira. The debt rose from 2.1 trillion to 87 trillion in 24 years now this is a scary one you know uh for nigerians so we keep hearing exactly? we keep hearing <laughs> is he, he telling is, his boss the president and you know he is telling nigerians not not the president what, what can we do about it we don't ask for those loans yeah we should does. be the about, national assembly we, we keep pushing it. for transparency so this is them giving us okay. transparency <laughs> All right, so be, uh, above or below the headmaster, or rather, we have Daurawa settles with Kano governor and returns to his bar commander. Uh, you find that story on page 33. Private sector weak as economy declines by $44 billion in 2023. That's according to NESG. 17 killed in Zaria, Kano, Abuja, Lokoja road crashes. A really sad one there. You find that on page 21. Now, uh, below the major story, we see IGP bars the POS operators from police stations nationwide. I mean, that's to keep the police safe, right? What is that story about? <laughs> if you want to get the details, of course, POS you grab the details. in police trust. stations. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it could be because of maybe, um, you know, some informant kind of situation. So if police okay. feel threatened by people saying really close to them, then okay. it's their decision. So uh, below that, we see the U.S. election. Supreme Court clears Trump for primaries. Oh, after Listen, the back and forth. Guess who the next president of the U.S. is? Trump. I just said guess. I didn't ask you to uh, make sure. Well, said, yeah. guess, anyway. <laughs> There's been um, a lot of, you know, back and should, forth. From, you know, uh, round two is going to Trump. be really yes, interesting. Yes, yes. And we can't wait to, to see really how that unfolds. Uh, healing masquerades go to church with native doctor for Thanksgiving. Interesting. What? You'll find that on page what? Come again? 20. <laughs> the ma masquerades go to church with a native doctor for Thanksgiving. Yeah. How okay. ironic, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, beside that, we have... Uh, officially the, the cruise capital of the world. <laughs> Indeed. No, it's, it is known worldwide. And Nigerians are poetic like that. Yeah. Uh, we have a pictorial of the vice president, uh, the Gombe state governor, Mohammed Inwa Yahya, Jigawa state governor, Omar Namadi, Deputy Governor of Gombe, Manasa Daniel Jatau, Deputy Governor of Brno State, Usman Kadafur, and CEO of the Global Outsource Limited, Amal Hassan, during the unveiling of the Outsource to Nigerian Initiative and Commissioning of Gombe Business Research and Outsourcing Center, which will create over 2,000 job opportunities for Gombe youth in line with the Governor Inua's vision. Well, it's all about Nigerians at the end of the day. Below that, we have children starving to death in northern Gaza hospitals. That's according to WHO. A really sad, you know, uh, uh, another war happening in Gaza. We hope that um, ends with this um, 
cease a fire for at least three mm -hmm. weeks, you know, negotiation and table. We hope we get future better results out of it. But these are some of the stories that you'd find on the Daily Trust site. Right. Morning. The Guardian is up next. 198,432 pending court cases leave many in jail, businesses stranded. 198,000. My goodness, and I think a lot of it has to do with the whole election petition thing that, mm. you know, made these cases, um, you know, moribund for quite some time. Stop proliferation of arms, light weapons, Tinubu, TAS, AU, and United Nations. One or two tools can't solve food price crisis, additional insist. And uh, furor over new tax regime, stiffer enforcement in Enugu. What is happening over there? More on that story on page four. Federal government to begin grain distribution, insists warehouse looting, criminal beyond hunger. Okay. And um, in other news, review Orange report before implementation. Civil servants tell federal government. Looting food warehouse, reflection of the hunger, frustration of Nigerians, according to the INC. Uh, and, okay. and the federal government is rebuting that saying no it's not just hunger <laughs> yeah i mean hunger can lead to crime and criminality so somehow intertwined all right let's take a look at the punch newspaper this morning top of the page the afdb plans about 2.7 billion dollar budget ag agri loans for nigeria uh, dangote names refinery road after wigwe approach Zimbabwe for solution to inflation or passenger tells federal government Zimbabwe okay <laughs> the, the major story that said food crisis the OPS warns of shutdown as hoodlums loot more trucks building materials spaghetti trucks attacked in Ogun Kaduna 15 arrested in Abuja federal go government condemns the warehouse looting and canoe store evacuates west states to get free grains uh, below there we see banks involved in 70% of financial crimes, that's according to EFCC, NSCDC, Tompolo, men raise on the oil thieves hideout. The same and NIN uh, case, we have the NCC defense blocking of phone lines as a lawyer slams 10 billion Nara suits. you find that story on page 35. Now, these are some of the stories on the Punch newspaper yeah. this morning. Really interesting. And uh, we'd love to get the take of uh, Dr. Teofilas Abba, Director, Programs Director of the Daily Trust Foundation, who is joining us this morning. Uh, doctor, back to back week, so I'm not mm -hmm. on leave. You, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We met last week, Tuesday, and I'm here again. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Um, <laughs> I'd love to get your take on the whole looting thing. Um, the federal government, after announcing this distribution of 2,000 metric tons two weeks ago, now it's saying, you know, plants are on to distribute them. So going into the third week, it's still not being distributed. And then the lootings continue to happen. What is your take on, on this whole scenario? Well, um, when you talk about some of the lootings that have taken place, well, I would say it's unfortunate. Because um, if, uh, if those uh, um, warehouses that have looted are not federal government warehouses, they belong to businessmen, you know, then it means that the business owners have lost a whole lot and uh, for you to have such good to your in your store yeah. you know in your warehouse you must have taken some bank loans so you can imagine uh, what will happen to the owners of uh, those uh, warehouses even i think there was one that was, they talked about it, a dangote truck where i was looted and anybody who thought that that belonged to dangote may be mistaken some persons who uh, uh maybe uh, i mean uh, who, who purchased this is from Dangote to sell in, uh, on retail may have invested so much money. So it's quite unfortunate that these lootings are taking place and the organized private sector, OPS, I think uh, the punch carried the story that they are saying, look, we may, we may have to shut down because of uh, these things. But the fact is that if the government had responded as quickly as it ought to, you know, if, for instance, the government uh, makes an announcement that, look, we are going to do this, we're going to intervene in this way, and we are seeing, you know, some trucks go to Gerki. Mm. I say, look, if you are a resident of Gerki, tell us your home address. Mm. Come and put down your name. Come and have so and so at a subsidized price. 
if we now see some of these uh, goods taken to Oshodi, mm. a part of Oshodi, and say, okay, we have delineated this part of Oshodi, come and buy at the, I mean, at the rock bottom price. You understand? So I know you say you should give them out, but subsidize this and reduce the price. If after two days, three days, four days, we are seeing steps being taken, you are going to local councils, you are going to district, uh, I mean, heads of um, um, district headquarters, you know, you know that there are about 100,000 persons in this district, and they will take these things to them. If we see these things happen, you see, some of these little will not people will be patient, say, well, we know there is a schedule, uh, in the next two days, they will come to our own place, we'll wait. Now, <laughs> Government has been making promises since mm -hmm. uh, last year, since June last year, and we have not seen them come to pass. And so people now have to take the law into their hands. Mm -hmm. And say, so, okay, look, I have to help myself because these guys are not ready to help me. Mm -hmm. you, you, got, you must demonstrate, you must demonstrate that you are serious by acting on what you say. If you say so, oh, I feel your pains, I feel what you are feeling, we are not comfortable with and you are saying all those things and we are not taking steps. You see. I think it was only the customs that came out to do something that was a bit impressive. Yeah. Well, it's okay. Face we see this thing working. We are selling this for you at the rate of 10,000. Yeah. Even though there was a tragedy. Yeah. You know, but th those are the practical steps that we want to see taken. Yeah. It's not you sitting down in your, on your high horses and telling people, I feel what you are feeling. Do you think, I'm going to do this. The government, I, do you, I call do you it the, the government of future because, tense. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't be living in future tense. Yeah. Do you think you the know? delay is because the grains are just not there? And that's why they're taking their time. I think the grains are there. You know, I think I think the grains are there. Because so if the government wants, why are they stalling? You know, yeah, I mean, it is. I I think the, maybe it's the bureaucracy. You know, the civil service has also bureaucracy. But this is not the time. People are talking about, you know, existential issues. Mm. It's not the time that the bureaucracy will tie. I mean, we will change your legs and say you cannot move. You want to make take this step, take that step, and that. People people are hungry. And this is not something that is far-fetched. We are, we are seeing it, we are feeling it. If you go to buy Akara, this, this common Akara, they give you Akara of 200 and 300 naira. Is it true? You understand? And we receive calls. People say, ah, I have not eaten for two days. I have not done this one. Please, do you have um, money to send? You, you, so this is not like, it's not, it's not a theory. People are suffering. Well, people are feeling it. And government, maybe because they don't buy, use money to buy anything, mm -hmm. they are there in the villa, they are there in, um, I mean, they are, I mean uh, houses where everything is ready for them. They, they are fewer, their vehicles are fewer, they don't need to go to a uh, person pay. You know, the food is available from the budget and all those things. Maybe they don't, they, that's why they feel that this thing is not real. But the reality is that people are hungry. And then you cannot begin to tell them, in future, I'm going to do the intentions cannot solve this problem. Mm -hmm. You know, we have been living in the government of future things for many years now. Buhari took us, we were talking about the future until after eight years. It never came to pass. And Tinubu is also coming to talk about future. We will, we will, we will, we shall, we will. We that assure is, you. We, yeah. we assure you. That is, that is not how your system is wrong. Former President Obasanjo is advising Nigeria to learn from Zimbabwe. I don't know whether it's Mugabe Zimbabwe <laughs> or Emerson Nangwagwa Zimbabwe, but what do you make of it? Are there some, you know, examples out there that we can follow? Well, I don't know what Zimbabwe has uh, <laughs> has uh, come an example to Nigeria. Because the last I read about Zimbabwe, it, I mean, the inflation yeah. was so bad. Yeah. And the, the economy, I mean, actually crumbled to the point that most Zimbabwe, many Zimbabweans were flooding South, in South Africa. They were mm. just doing all sorts of minor jobs mm. to the point that if there's a xenophobic attack that we hear about, mm. you know, they target Zimbabweans mm. because they were the ones who would take a job of 10 naira and say, okay, I will do it for 2 naira. Yeah. And Sarah will say, no, I mean, can you come and take up this job? We don't, this, this is a job that we are rejecting and you are taking it over. It's like, so I don't think Zimbabwe, I mean, I don't know why. I'm not, I don't, I'm not registered. Could I don't know why like you should learn from Zimbabwe. Now, I, I hope it's a sarcastic one because, you know, there's well, no... Because can... if, you, if you talk, Zimbabwe cannot be an example of a, of a, 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 a system it. that is tackling... Uh, inflation and hunger yeah. and all this and all that. Yeah. Well, the yeah. former president of Asandra is known for being, you know, a bit sarcastic. sarcastic yes, yeah. so nah. perhaps it could. We actually be saying that we are on the, on the road to Zimbabwe. Right. Because if you look at the Zimbabwean currency, it got so bad that to buy a, uh, to buy a, a, a loaf of bread, yeah. you have to load money in a basket. Yeah. You know, to be able to buy a loaf of bread, it was so bad. And that was literal. It's not as if it's a uh, metaphoric. Yeah. Literally, you have to, you have I mean, the, uh, millions of dollars, Venezuela, millions of Zimbabwe dollars to buy a loaf of bread. Yeah. 
You know, so it wasn't really funny. Perhaps maybe maybe he's trying to say, okay, look, be careful. Yeah. You are on your on your on the road to Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, exactly. Yes, maybe that's what he's saying. I think I think uh, was it huh? PDP or some or one of the opposition parties described you know the situation similar to Zimbabwe some some weeks. In Venezuela, yeah, you're talking Venezuela, about Venezuela, yeah. part of Venezuela. Mm. So, you know, but the unfortunate uh, thing is that you see in the in the, case, in the case of Venezuela, what happened was this. The oil price, they you know they depended on, on crude oil like Nigeria, but the oil price reached the rock bottom about twelve or ten dollars for a barrel. So they could no longer fund the subsidized shisho system. You know, but in our own case, oil, oil is about it's something dollars to a barrel. But unfortunately, the oil theft and the fact that some of the oil has been sold in advance, mm. you know, it's making us not to even benefit yeah. from the rising price of oil. Yeah. Really so fair. it's a problem. And in All talking right. about um, the big story uh, mm. that um, you, you know, Sumaya read earlier, the governor of the central bank is warning Niger about our uh, debt risks. Mm. And um, we're, we're all too familiar with this particular issue. Every year for the past, I don't know how long, we've had to worry <laughs> about the rising debt ceiling, the rising. And I think um, the last finance minister, Zainab Ahmed, was saying, listen, uh, debt to GDP ratio is still healthy, is still mm. well within the economic, uh, the, the internationally accepted standards. Mm. So there's nothing to worry about. Again, we're reoccurring the same thing. We're blowing up uh, the future as far as, um, you know, financial viability is concerned. What do you make of the CBN's, uh, the CBN government's well, take on this? What what you have said is um, is is is, 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 a, is is very important, you know, because um, like I think was it two days ago I was looking at Nigeria's debts, and I saw that we are owing uh, IMF three point four billion, and that's why IMF is saying, look, we are owing us so much money. We have our loan officers in Nigeria, so you must obey everything they tell you. Remove subsidies on petrol. Remove subsidies on electricity. Because if you are owing them, you, they will give you uh, instructions. Mm. They will tell this what you want. Because Conditions. you see, if you read their report, they are saying, look, <clears throat> for you, we want to know if you can pay this debt. We don't want you to owe us. We want to know if you can actually pay up. So when they are giving this instruction, it's not like it's not as if they, they are just uh, they, are, they, they are not thinking about Nigerians mm. actually. Mm. When they say oh, do this, they are, they are thinking about how are we going to protect. This three point something billion that we give to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That's why they give all those rules. And one can also say, look, we have to be aware. I, actually, I, I, I think I mean he's right. Let me tell you, most of the loans that have been taken, we have not reaped the benefit of those loans. Either the money, even at the state level, state government to take loan, the loans will not be applica applied to what they, 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 they promised to use a loan for. The money will be stolen. At the federal level, I would think I was looking at what the government, how, why did the government take 3.4 billion, you know, from IMF? You understand? I would try to look at why and whether those things were actually uh, yielding, yielding fruit. Nigeria is paying back about 500 uh, million to China you know, on Nigeria, I mean, Abuja Railway really? contract. But you know that they, they are not even any money to, to pay up. So, but government must. Pay, even though they say they tell that you are already a bankrupt nation. Mm -hmm. If you are bankrupt, you are you are you are blacklisted. You cannot receive any financial support. So you see, what Kadoso is saying is that look, as long as we keep taking this loan, and the fact is that as long as these loans are not applied in such a way that they bring the kind of benefits mm -hmm. to the society, you know, it means that we are actually wasting money. You are collecting this money, suppose are stealing this money, and you have to pay back. At, a, at, at an interest. So it is, not, it is not even helping the economy at all. It's not even helping Nigeria at all. So but the, we have to pay. So the question, There's nothing you can do about I'll, I'll, it. I'll, let me throw the question that Abdul asked me before. Abdul asked, is the warning to Nigerians or the president or you know, yeah. federal government? Well, I think uh, he had to sound this warning because it's not only the federal government that is owing. You know, take, that yeah, takes that loans. The state's government. You understand? The state governments take loans. And they go to the, uh, is it the DMO office, and they go to some offices, and they say, well, we, we are going to support you. Maybe the revenue people will say, well, yeah, they are entitled to some billion. Now, now they can get up to six, 6 billion or 7 billion every month or 10 billion. So if they take this loan and they are asked to pay 1 billion monthly, they can do it. We approve, we approve, we approve. And so here he's saying that, look, those of you who do this approval, I want you to know that we are in, in, deep, uh, prob it's, uh, in trouble. I was looking at um, the medium term econo I mean, uh, economic uh, I mean, uh, policy of government, you know, and I, was, I discovered that in 2024, there was actually no money for capital expenditure. 
it, it, it started from I think 2021, 20, 22, 23, you know. Then it, it graduated. The way it graduated by 2024, in the in the projection based on debt, based on the expenditure and all those things, there was just nothing for capital. I want to say, why is it so? You understand? When somebody drew my attention to it and I went to look at it, I said, it's true. If, when uh, the former minister of uh, finances, uh, Zenaba, yeah. yes, when she presented it, I was scared. And the reality is this, that look, whatever money government will spend now, it has to generate internally. And that's why it has to shade weight. You know, to say, oh, the subsidy, this must go, that subsidy must go. And the worst thing is the devaluation of the Naira. Yeah. It talks about 139 trillion. It wasn't like that last year. Oh. If you ask yourself, it was about 70 something trillion, it's something trillion last year. But now it is now 139 yeah, trillion. Yeah, yeah. It's not as if they took more loan. But the devaluation of the Naira is affecting what you must go back. And you know the unfortunate thing, you must end this 139 trillion to be able to pay. It's mm. really looking So it's not, it's not a palatable situation. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, and the people, the house, I pity the states because the House of Assemblies are not holding governors accountable. Mm. Governors will write this thing, they will just approve, approve, approve. They will collect this money, and nobody will ask governors. I mean, the two using major problems we have here is, is economic saboteurs it's and sabotage. corruption. No, Those thank two you very much. What is bothering us. Well, yeah. thank you so much, uh, Dr. Theophilus Abba, Program Director, Daily Trust Foundation, for joining us to review the front pages uh, of the National Daily. So, I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you so very much, much for stopping by this morning. Yes, yes. And with that, of course, we have come to the end of a Daybreak on Trust TV this Tuesday morning. Please do stick around. At the top of the hour, Adeni Adjishafe would bring you 360 Sport. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Do have a lovely day. Thank you most kindly for joining us on the program. We'll see you tomorrow.